having some technical difficulties. I'm so sorry. Praise the Lord. Let me go back over this so that you can understand. Uh, and I hope most of you heard uh, most of what I was saying. Praise the Lord. But we were dealing with uh, the Greek word pasco, which means uh, to suffer. And I was giving you various different scriptures uh, that dealt with the suffering of Christ. Praise the Lord. And and last one I gave you was Acts chapter 1 and 3. Bible says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. And so he chooses uh, in this particular verse uh, to call Pasco passion or suffering. Praise the Lord. But notice not only this. Saint, it is also used of St. Paul in chapter 9 of the book of Acts in verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer. Pasco for my name's sake. Uh, so these scriptures in and of themselves show us that in order uh, that even Christ to have fulfillment in his life, there had to be a process called suffering. Praise the Lord. Uh, and the process of suffering is because the flesh often rejects the process. Your flesh does not want to be processed. It does not want to go through the suffering, praise the Lord. Amen. And this is where the fight comes from in many cases, praise the Lord. This is the reason why sometimes we are often stuck at a certain level over and over and over again. Because when God allows situations to come, our flesh fights the process and we side with our flesh rather than submitting ourselves to the process of, amen, suffering. My God. So tonight I want to deal with this, praise the Lord. Uh, and so the first thing I want to deal with tonight, I want to give you this first uh, 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 point. In order to be processed, amen, for fulfillment, amen, number one, humility must be present before one is exalted by God. Humility must be present before one is exalted by God. Somebody type in your cue. Humility, praise the Lord. The Bible says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and you will be exalted in due time. Exaltation happens only after humiliation. After a humbling of yourself, amen, praise the Lord. Then the Bible, it, and it doesn't even tell you exactly when. He says in due time. That means when God says you're ready, when God thinks, amen, and feels, praise the Lord, that you have been processed enough. He says, after you have humbled yourself, he says, then I will exalt you in due time, praise the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So humility is necessary before exaltation. Let me tell you this. People that exalt themselves, people that insist on putting themselves in a place that they have not been processed for, uh, praise the Lord, I want you to understand that, that they will temporarily experience the pleasure of the moment. Understand this. They will temporarily experience the pleasure of the moment, but ultimately they will be abased. They will be brought down. Matthew 23 and 12 says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, meaning to be brought low. But he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So people try to skip the process. By putting themselves in a position or trying, you know, sometimes people don't want to go through the process, so they try to skip steps, amen. They try, glory to God, to uh, behave and act like, you know, I don't have to go through this. Or, but I want you to understand, I don't care how mature you think you are. I don't care how uh, 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 gifted you are. Uh, your giftedness and, and your so-called maturity is not going to abdicate the uh, process in your life. You're going to be processed. And for those of you that uh, uh, try to escape the process, all you're going to do is prolong yourself, amen, in that particular uh, situation longer. And what is it that tries to get you to escape the process? It is pride. Amen. It is pride. And notice this. I want you to understand something about pride. The Bible says God resists the proud. Praise the Lord. Amen. In James 4 and 6, praise the Lord. He says, amen, uh, but he give more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, 
but give grace unto the humble. Resisteth the proud, praise the Lord. He says in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5 and verse 5, he says, You younger, submit yourselves to those that are older. And yea, all of you be subject to one another and be what? Clothed in humility. Wear humility like a garment. He says, For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That word resist means God fights, amen, the proud. People that have pride in them will find themselves on the receiving end of God's fight. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something, beloved. When God begins to fight you, praise the Lord, there is nobody in the world that can help you. When God starts fighting you, things, amen, don't go right. When God starts fighting you, it doesn't matter who say you're good or who prophesies to you or who lay hands on you. When God is fighting you, praise the Lord, amen, that means he sees something in you that is of pride. And why does God hate pride? Amen, I'll tell you why. The Bible says that, that pride cometh before destruction and a haughty spirit before a great fall because pride is one of the first sins that was exhibited and pride did not start on earth, but pride started in heaven. The Bible says that Satan was good. He was a covering cherub until iniquity or until pride was found in him and he wanted to, a man, be in a position that God had not made him to be in. And so God, a man, uh, allorates him by casting him out of heaven and putting him in a lower position. He removes him. And so, a man, those of us that are proud, when you resist the process of God breaking you and, 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 and humiliating you. And I know the word humiliate sounds so terrible. And some people say, God will not humiliate you. If folks tell you that God will not humiliate you, they are lying to you. God absolutely hates pride. Pride is an attribute of Satan. And if you walk in pride, praise the Lord, understand this, that you are inviting God to fight against you. The reason why you keep hitting yourself against a brick wall, because you keep trying to do it your way, rather than allowing God to humble you and do it his way. So, amen, the first thing you got to do in order to be processed for the fulfillment of your promise, when God gives you a big promise, amen, you must humble yourself, praise the Lord. You must humble yourself. Listen to me, praise the Lord. You can either have exaltation or you can have your pride. But you cannot have both your pride and your exaltation. You must humble yourself. You cannot give yourself the credit. God must have the glory for everything that he does in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. If he gives you fame, if he gives you fortune, if he gives you a platform, if he makes your name great, he's only made your name great so that you can glorify and make his name great. So in order to get, praise the Lord, hallelujah, the process out, you must have humility. Number two, in order, praise the Lord, amen, uh, 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 to be processed, amen, you must be willing uh, to put all of your care on him. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. You must be, praise the Lord, persuaded that God cares for you. Do you know that? I know it seems hard, but God cares for you. When you are in the midst of the process, sometimes it feels like God has turned his back on you, but God cares for you. He says, and I want you to cast all of your cares, all of your concerns, everything that, that, that keeps you up at night. He says, I want you to cast them all on me. Because if you give me your cares, that means you don't have a care. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Number one, he will supply all of your need. Come on, somebody. God will supply all of your need. I am a witness tonight that even when you're going through the process, when you're being processed for greatness, and there are needs that arise while you are on the potter's wheel, amen, I want you to understand that God will supply your need, praise the Lord. You will not go under when you're going through the process because God will supply your need. Come on, somebody. And then, praise the Lord, glory to God, understand this. Uh, uh, when you are going through the process, amen, God knows how long you need to be in the process. Somebody say, okay, Lord, get me out, Jesus, get me out, Lord. I can't.
can't stand it no more. I can't take it no more. I can't. I listen. I'm tired of being in this. I'm tired of waiting, Lord. When you gonna do it, Lord? When you gonna bring me out? Glory to God. I done been through. I'm ready. How many of you ever prayed that prayer? Lord, I'm ready for the next of God. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Listen to me. God knows when you are ready to come out of this process. Hmm. God's got his hands on the thermostat. God's got his hands on the control, praise the Lord. And I want you to understand that God is in complete control. And praise the Lord, if God is in control, that means nothing is out of control. Come on, somebody. There is nothing that is out of control, praise the Lord. So you must cast all your care upon him. Let me tell you what happens if you don't cast your care on him. Praise the Lord. The moment something, amen, doesn't go to suit you, you will then take it out of God's hand and try to do things yourself. Have you ever tried to do something and made a mess out of it? Have you ever tried to do something and realized, praise the Lord, it was you and it wasn't God? And the end result of the thing is, praise the Lord, that you never, 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 ever, praise the Lord, it never uh, 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 does well. It never goes well. Come on, somebody. Why? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God is not going to share his glory. So you need to cast your care upon him. Trust him in the process so that even when things don't go the way you think they should go, amen, it is working out for your good. So cast all your care. Number three. The Bible says you must be alert and vigilant. You must be alert and vigilant. You got to be watchful. Amen. You cannot be lazy, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you must be alert and vigilant. Why do I have to be watchful? Because Satan is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour the, the, the word that is coming in your life. You know, praise the Lord, you can't be plucked out of God's hand. But I'm telling you what, that word that is placed in your heart, amen, if you don't do anything with it, Satan can come and snatch that word of promise out of your heart. Praise the Lord. So you've got to be watchful, praise the Lord. You've got to be watchful. Because the Bible says Satan is as a roaring lion. What does a roaring lion do? A roaring lion stalks his prey. And a roaring lion makes a lot of noise. It's really the noise that kills the prey and not really the lion's bite. Because if they don't allow themselves to be intimidated by the roar of the enemy, they can keep running. But when they hear that roar, they paralyze with fear. And because they paralyze with fear, they're stuck, amen, in a place where the enemy can come in and devour. Have, have the enemy roared in your life and paralyzed you? Have you found yourself stuck in a situation that you should be running out of? Praise the Lord. You need to open your eyes and watch. So that your feet can get unstuck so that you can move forward. Come on, somebody. Suffering is for a while. Suffering is for a while. That's number four. Suffering a while. After you have suffered a while. Amen. I know that's not a pop. What I'm teaching tonight is not popular. But if you accept what I'm saying, it's going to take you to the next level. He says, after you have suffered a while. How long is a while? Hmm? How long is a while? Praise the Lord. Well, we would like it to be maybe three days. Amen. Say we want it to be six months. Praise the Lord. We don't, we don't want to wait long for what God has promised. But he says, after you have suffered a while. Do you know that God uses suffering to, to actually, praise the Lord, bring about his, his will in your life? The Bible says that. Jesus Christ, though he was a son, yet learned the obedience to the things which he suffered. He learned how to be obedient to what he suffered. I want you to understand that you're going to learn obedience to God through the suffering that you go through. When you first start off with God, you don't know how to obey him. You don't know how to follow him. You're not a mature son or daughter in Christ. So you continue to go through the situation and the suffering, amen, until you learn how to hear his voice. And hearing his voice is what causes you to come out of the situation. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, suffering a while, number one, makes you perfect. Or it makes you mature. Actually, when I looked up this word, I saw the word humus. Where you get the word human from. So, suffering makes you you. It makes you. It makes you. It makes you. It makes you.
shoot. You can tell in a moment those people that have not been through anything and, and been through the process. I'm not going to say they ain't been through no trouble, but they have not been processed. There's a difference between going through trouble and then going through the process. Some of you think that because you went through trouble, you've been through the process. You can have gone through a whole lot of trouble, a lot of hell in your life, but you have not been processed. And I think that's a lot of times why you keep going. You're like, Lord, I done been through this already. And it's because you went through the trouble, but you didn't get processed. Because when you go through it, it matures you. It, 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 it gives you a, a humus. It makes you. It makes you. It, it, it makes you into, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. It makes you into what God has called you to be. Amen. It perfects you. Praise the Lord. It teaches you how, uh, it gives you principles. It teaches you how to go through the low places in your life. Amen. And even in the low places, it teaches you how to trust God. It teaches you what to say. What not to say. It teaches you who to trust and who not to trust. You know, when I first started out in doing this for the Lord and serving the Lord, amen, I, I was a very trusting person. I was very trusting. And I all, you know, always share things with people, my personal stuff, and, and all of the things that the Lord showed me in my personal endeavors, and I would just share with them. And I found out that, you know, just because a person Praise the Lord, smiles at you doesn't mean that they're not jealous of you. And generally, a person that has evil intentions or that has a hidden agenda, praise the Lord, when they find out what you're trying to do, many times they will try to make it happen first, praise the Lord, and, or, or they fight you in prayer or they fight you, amen, in action. They try to turn people against you. And so when you suffer that, you learn how, amen, when, the, when even when you're going through, you keep your mouth shut. You don't let everybody know your next move. Some of you, praise the Lord, the reason why you continue to go through a fight over some of the most simple things, the most simple things, you get on Facebook and you post everything before you do it, praise the Lord. And so what you do, you alert Satan and his minions and everything that he has on post to fight you because guess what? He doesn't want the word of God uh, being perfected in your life. Because when God's word gets perfected in your life, that means God gets the glory out of your life. That means, praise the Lord, somebody will be encouraged and strengthened when they see the finished work of God in your life and, and, and that you're proven, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But a lot of times when, when, when you, amen, don't allow yourself to be made perfect and you say things and do things prematurely, you open yourself up for the, the attack of the enemy. So if you're going to go buy a house, hush, praise the Lord. If you're going for a job interview or you're trying, praise the Lord, to, 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 to get a, a landing interview for, for this next job, hush. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you and somebody are, 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 are talking and thinking about getting married, hush. It's funny how I see people post all of their relationships on, on Facebook live, all of their little dates and all of their, praise the Lord, what they're doing. And, and then they don't understand that when their relationships start to go through hell, praise the Lord. Then they're mad because folks like, you know, well, what's going on? And you're like, that ain't none of your business. Well, you told us all everything about your business. You know, so since you told me about your business, I say, you give, when you tell everything that you're doing, you're giving Satan a man of view. That's why it also says be vigilant. Know what you can talk about. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. So he says, when you are suffering, it perfects you. And, and, and it makes you you. And then, then it, guess what else it does? It establishes you, or, or the, the, the New English word would be it establishes. And, and that word establish means it confirms. It makes you firm. It makes you stable. How many folk around here call themselves prophets and, and, and apostles, some, and, and church folk, and every time you see they're going live, but you can't trust them? Come on, somebody. Because they're not stable. They're not consistent. They, they haven't really allowed themselves to be processed in the suffering. And I'm telling you that if you allow yourself to be processed, amen, in your time of suffering, it will confirm you. It will firm you up. It will make you stable. And it will make you trustworthy. It will make you a pillar in the house of God. It will make you something that people can have confidence in. A, a, a faith that has not 
been tested cannot be trusted. Praise the Lord. People that tell you to do a whole lot of stuff and they have not, praise the Lord, uh, 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 did it themselves, they really have no point in reference to tell you a whole lot of things. A man that's going to pray for you to get a, get a new house and they've never had a new house and they don't own a new house, they're really uh, praying above their pay grade. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Uh, 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 if I've never achieved millionaire status, I can't really tell you how to operate in millionaire status. The Lord may give me a word and say, God going to bless you to be a millionaire. But to actually give you the status, uh, give you the process of what it takes to be a millionaire, once you receive that word, you need to go connect yourself with somebody that's gotten their first million. Because if you haven't, if, if, if I'm not a millionaire, I can't give you that process. Oh, y'all ain't liking my calling. Praise the Lord. Those, those that are not married or those that have uh, uh, not been married for, for a short amount of time, they're not the ones you need to go to for marital counseling or, or marital advice because what they're saying has not been proven in their own life. It's funny how people will take folks that don't have no experience in anything and, and try to make that person their idol and wonder why when they give you advice it gets worse instead of better. Because, praise the Lord, whatever they're trying to tell you, it has not been proven. You may be a great evangelist, but you can't tell me how to pastor because you're not a pastor. Oh, you ain't liking what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. You may be a great prophet, but if you don't have any children, you can't tell me how to be a good father. There are some things that only come through the process and through the suffering. You're not going to get out. Listen to me. I don't care how mature you think you are. You got to go through that process. You got to go through the process. And, and what I'm seeing a lot today is these overnight wonders that are just springing up overnight. That's overnight. They get Facebook famous. Social media savvy. They know how to do a lot of stuff. And, and you see them. And many people are putting their comments. And then two years down the road, you don't even know where they're at. Praise the Lord. Uh, they, they, they done fell into sin. They got 15 children out of wedlock. They got somebody pregnant. You don't know what's going on in their life. Somebody said, well, Pastor Scott, you're judging. No, I'm not judging them. What I'm trying to tell you is they moved too fast because they had not been processed. See, a lot of things that you can avoid if you allow yourself to be processed. Mm. Oh, but the flesh wants to be exposed so much. It wants to be exposed so much, praise the Lord, because you got to get out there. You got to be seen. Everybody got, I got a word for the nation, but you can't even serve in your local assembly. Hallelujah. God has sent you to Africa, but your next door neighbor don't even know you saved. Hallelujah. You've been arguing with your neighbor about parking spaces. Praise the Lord. And, and, and you wonder why they won't come to church. But you got to be processed for greatness. He says, he says, I've called you to be witnesses both to me where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, praise the Lord, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, I start you at the home front and then I move you from step to step. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. In other words, you have to have a process. You got if you a preacher, you have to have a process. Amen. If you are an apostle, if you're gonna be a bishop, if you're gonna be anything, there is a process. It just doesn't happen a boom overnight. I'm all of these things. You got to go. Even the apostle Paul, God called him to be an apostle, but he spent at least three years in the desert because the church would not trust him. Because what has not been tested cannot be trusted. I know, brother preacher, you got a word for everybody, but you cannot be trusted. Just because you got a large Facebook following does not mean that you can be trusted. You got to go through your name, got to be scandalized. Amen. Praise God. Folk turn their backs on you, and then you got to continue to be consistent. You can't come on Facebook and have an emotional meltdown before everybody and then expect me to trust you to pray for me. No, baby, you need to get prayer. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. You got to be processed. Hallelujah. Let, let me give you a quick testimony. As many of you know, praise the Lord, we, my wife and I, we just posted, amen, that, that we... Uh, uh, God bless us to get into our new house, praise the Lord. What many of you don't know is that this was a word given to us by God uh, over 10 years ago. 
at least 10 years, praise God. Let's God can correct me, praise the Lord. Amen. But at least 10 years. And we had prophets come and tell us, put put stuff in a box and put it at the door. You're going to move here. And, and, and every time we would go to church, and, and then I went to a church one time, I was sitting in the back of the church. And, 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 and a man got up before the offering and came and prophesied and went, came straight to me in the back of the church and told me that God was going to give me a house. Praise the Lord. Ten years. Ten years. Praise the Lord. And it got so, praise the Lord, uh, 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 bad because I was in a home, praise the Lord, that when we first got it, it was so beautiful. It was so nice. I loved it. I was grateful. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. It looked good. God blessed us. And it was, it was amazing how God gave us that house. So I was happy. But while we were there, we began to grow as a family and to expand. And in a three-bedroom house, you're too uh, uh, big to live there when you have 13 folk, praise the Lord, and two dogs. <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. And, 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 and children over the course of time will do damage over that. So we got the word, we got the prophecy, and we will believe in God, praise the Lord. And, but then after a while, we got discouraged because in our mind, praise the Lord, when we got the word that God was going to give us a house, we was thinking, boom, by the beam, Ishabai is speaking tongues and stand on your uh, left foot and hop four times and glory to God, boom, that's going to be the house. Let me tell you something. We were irresponsible with our credit, our credit, you know, in, in doing things for the house of God as a establishmentarian. A lot of times your credit, praise the Lord, is on the line for a lot of things, paying bills. Amen. Got in trouble. God, I, and see, I don't mind telling you because I, you know, I've been through it. And so I tell myself for the glory of God. Got in foreclosure trying to keep the church going, uh, paying responsibilities that belong to the people. And, and I mean, praise the Lord, uh, my stuff was jacked up and was broke that I couldn't pay attention. You know, but I got a word from the Lord. Amen. And, and in that word from the Lord, I went to, praise the Lord, uh, multiple uh, mortgage companies and apply for mortgage only to, to almost be laughed out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and one lady said, Mr. Scott, I just don't know how it's going. And I got the faith. And what God had to teach me through the process, yes, I'm going to give you this house, but you need to go back, look at your credit report and clean your credit up because your name is attached amen to your credit and what does the bible say about a pastor and a leader he must have a good report of not only them on the inside but them on the outside how you gonna be a bishop and your name stinks to high heaven because you don't pay your bills on time y'all don't hear me you don't take care of your family on time your family don't have nowhere to live at praise the lord because you keep making financial decisions that are terrible and you saying it's the devil that's taking me through no brother no sister it's not the devil taking you through it is in your immaturity in that area and you got to grow up in that area and god gonna keep making sure you go through that season until you grow up and take care of your financial responsibility so we had to go through the process we were humiliated you hear what I'm telling you? We, we were humiliated. My children were humiliated. But we went through it. And then all of a sudden, in due time, Lord have mercy, God knows how to exalt you. I'm not telling you this to tell you that I'm just perfect and I have arrived. But I tell you what, God perfected me in that area. And I can tell you, I can help you get out of your cycle of dysfunction, your cycle of why is it that I keep running through this same cycle all right i want you to know it's not it's nothing spooky it's nothing hocus pocus you and and and, and, and preachers can pray over a bottle of water and tell you go throw it on the property or, or go take the oil and anoint it over the house you ain't gonna get the car you ain't gonna get the wife you ain't gonna get the husband some of you are waiting to be married praise the lord but you have not been processed you, 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 you want to be married, but you're still thinking like a single person. You got to be processed. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. Suffering is the process that brings fulfillment. And if you're unwilling to go through the process, then you're not going to reach the place called fulfillment. Jesus could not raise, be risen on the third day until he went to the grave. And he couldn't go to the
to the grave until he was beaten and rejected. Hallelujah. He couldn't be, praise the Lord, hallelujah, crucified until he was lied on. He had to go through the process, but then on the third day, he rose from the dead and he was able to be glorified. And he told the disciples that if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. I don't want nobody in position around me that is unwilling to suffer with me. Hallelujah. If you're unwilling to suffer with me, I don't want to be married to you. Thank God for Lady Scott because she suffered with me while I made mistakes, while I got mature in that area. Even She waited on me. She got matured with me. And so now we are experiencing the grace of God together because she suffered with me. I'm telling you, you've got to be processed, amen, for greatness. You've got to be processed to make it to the next level. I'm telling you, and I'm prophesying, and I feel it down in my soul. I feel the word new, new, new. I need some of you just to type new. I need about, amen, 15 of you just type new, 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 new. I feel new coming all in my spirit and what I'm telling you some of you have gone through hell you've gone through high water you've been lied on you've been set back praise the Lord you've been going through amen various different cycles of dysfunction but because you have processed your due time has hit now and your now is about to become new praise the Lord all things are about to become new in your life God is resetting some stuff come on somebody hallelujah because you have been processed and because you've been processed, you're about to receive fulfillment. There are some ministries that have been processed, and you're about to receive fulfillment. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you connect yourself to, who you get up under. You can get by all these big-time bishops and all these big-name prophets thinking that if I get connected to them, then that's going to shoot my ministry and make me go further. Let me tell you something. You still have to be processed. Because if you get somewhere too fast and you haven't been processed, it's going to be short-lived. You better take the wisdom. I, I didn't just start preaching. I've been saved for 30 years. I've been preaching for about 27 years. I, I've been a pastor, praise the Lord, for 20 years. Amen, Zion. Glory to God. I've been married for almost, almost 21 years. Praise the Lord. I've been a daddy for 20 years. Amen. What, I, what I'm telling you is proven stuff. What I'm telling you is stuff that really works. Don't you listen at these Johnny come lately that think that you can skip the process and you're not going to skip. Listen to me. I'm talking about if the rapture is coming in 10 days, you're still not going to skip the process to get what you're going to need from God. Because God is a God of order. God is a God of process. He made the process. So when he, if he makes you skip the process, that means, praise the Lord, he's denying who he is in himself. He said, let there be light. And then there was light. When he created the trees, then he created the trees with fruit within themselves. Amen. Praise the Lord. That each tree would bear fruit. Amen. And the fruit would be, have seed within itself. So you've never seen God create another tree. Because the process is the seed comes out of the fruit. And if you put the fruit in the ground, then you can get a tree. Praise the Lord. But if you stand there, praise the Lord, talking about, Lord, I'm looking for this tree to come forth. And you had not planted no seeds in the ground. Let me help you understand something. You're not going to get no tree. Because God is not creating trees it's a process it's a process you reap what you sow those of you trying to get home those of you praise the lord trying to get things in your life and you're not tithing you're not giving you're not linked up to anybody praise the lord i want you to understand praise the lord that things are not going to happen until you learn how to sow if you got it without sowing god didn't give it to you let me hit it again. If you got it without giving and without sowing, God didn't give it to you. Praise the Lord. Because his word is true. You reap what you sow. That can be good. That can be bad. That can be ugly. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You must be processed. You got to be processed. You're not going to make it until you're processed. Process brings on your fulfillment. So he says, amen, he will make you perfect. He will establish you. Come on, somebody. He will make you firm and stable. Listen to what else he said. He will strengthen you. Don't people need to be strong today? The word of the Lord says that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is what? Small. I don't care how much you speak in tongues and shout all over the floor. If, if, if a trial come and, and you give up and you go back, what that means is, praise the Lord, you didn't have a whole lot of strength. 
I don't look at strength based upon how much you talk or how much you shout. I, I look at strength based upon how long you stick and stay. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing? And then the last one he says, and he settles you. Settling you means he lays a foundation in you. Oh, my God. Aren't you tired of being dug up when you got to always go back and lay a foundation? Why don't you let him take you through the process so there's a foundation laid? So that every time you get ready to go into your new, you don't always have to tear up the foundation. You can build. You can build. But some of you can never start building because you have never stayed still long enough to allow a foundation to be made in you. Yes, I'm talking to you, prophet. I'm talking to you, prophetess. I'm talking to all of you, praise the Lord, that's still trying to find out what God has for your life. If you stay still long enough and stop allowing yourself to be offended because nobody uh, you know, won't kiss your behind or, or, or speak of your greatness, you're not great yet. God ain't called, you're not great yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not great yet. You're not there yet. You're not there. You got to go through a process. And until God gives you your own, you have to serve somebody that has it. And until you learn how to be a servant, the Bible says, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who will entrust you with your own? That sounds so good. I'll say that again. God says, if you have not been faithful, and that which belongs to another man. Who will entrust you with your own? Why do you think you belong at the head of a ministry and you can't serve nobody else's ministry? As soon as you got your title, as soon as you got ordained, as soon as you got your life, you went off to go establish a church. You didn't even learn how to walk in it good enough. Don't get mad at me. I'm just giving you what God has given you. You have to have process before you have fulfillment. And process is just like it sounds. It takes time. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. So when you begin to see God do things in people's lives, understand, amen, that, that amen, it didn't happen. It may look like to you it happened overnight, but it did not. It was a process. Bishop Jake says when they discovered him, I, he said they discovered me. I, I was discovered. When they put him on TV, and he said, man, I had already, for 20 years, I'd already been preaching. I've been preaching, and God tested him in a church with seven people. Seven people in which, he, I mean, he's about five of them rode with him all the way, 80 miles one way. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Seven years, amen, to be faithful. Seven years. I'm talking about process that brings fulfillment. You got to be processed. You got to be told no a few times so that you can get that yes. You got to be processed. Come on, somebody. I know you think, praise the Lord, that God's supposed to, you're supposed to snap your finger and God is your butler. God is not put on this earth to serve you. You're put on this earth to serve God. And so in order to get what God has for you, you have to be processed to receive fulfillment. I hope somebody's getting something out of this. Listen to these last few points, and then I'm going I'm to bring it in because my time, amen, is failing me. When God is going to do something great in your life, understand that the great thing that he's going to do in your life is connected to his greater purpose, okay? The great thing that he has promised you, the great thing that he's going to do for you is connected to his greater purpose, which means, uh, according to Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of them that love God. Those who are the called according to his purpose, when he gets ready to do something great in your life, there is great purpose. It's his great purpose. And for this reason, you have to be processed. And generally, this is what the process looks like. Listen to this. The process is the word, the weight, and the fulfillment. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to bring this in. The word, the weight, and the fulfillment. Praise the Lord. The word is usually a prophetic declaration over your life, a dream or a vision, something that God has given to you. And it is uh, this declaration requires faith, and, and radical faith, like what I preached on Sunday, to believe it. It takes faith to believe it. And so this word is usually declared in your life. Uh, uh, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So it is a word from God, amen, that, that heralds what the thing that God's going to do. 
Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, then there is the wait. Praise the Lord. And this wait is the process. Uh, it is a process and trial of suffering to make you ready for your new. And usually the wait is the most trying season of your life, the waiting period, because you don't know how long you have to wait. And then last but not least, the fulfillment. The fulfillment is when God brings to fruition the word spoken over your life. Let me give you an example so you'll understand the word, the wait, and the fulfillment. Joseph was given a word over his life. He was told that he was going to rule uh, over his brothers. He got the word, but then the wait came in. And during the period of the wait, he was thrown in a pit. He was put in uh, 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 slavery. He was thrown in prison. Amen? So he went from the pit to part of his house. Amen? From part of his house to the prison. And then finally, he ended up in the palace. Let me say that again. He went, he got a word from the Lord, but the wait, in the waiting, hear what I'm saying, in the waiting, he went from, praise the Lord, the pit, to Potiphar's house, as a slave, from Potiphar's house to prison, and then finally, he got into fulfillment when he got into the palace. The wait is the process. The wait, Moses, praise the Lord, amen, had to go through, amen, before he could get the promise, praise the Lord. He got a word, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. He got there, praise the Lord. Gave the word, but then he had to uh, withstand the plague and the ridicule and the persecution of Pharaoh. Not let, and, then, and consequently, the, the persecution of the people that he was suffering. And finally, he got to the place of fulfillment. David, last but not least, got a word over his life. He was anointed by the premier prophet of that day. And that prophet said, you are going to be captain over my people. And oil poured on David. The seal broke off of the horn. Come on, somebody. But he got the word. And then he went into the waiting process. And in the waiting process, praise our God, he had to kill a giant. Yes. He had to, to, to be... Uh, Chased and hunted down by the same person he was sent to serve. Praise the Lord. And then he got into fulfillment. So just because God gave you a word yesterday, get ready to go through the process. Every time he gets you the word, go through the wait. And, go, and, and then after you go through the wait, you can run into the fulfillment. Praise the Lord. You understand this, praise the Lord. In order to be processed, you must have humility. You must lose your pride. You hear me? You must have humility. Praise the Lord. You must be willing to cast your cares on him. You must be alert and vigilant. Come on, somebody. Are you in? And you must be willing to suffer for a while. And this is the process, process suffering that yields fulfillment in your life. I pray that I've said something tonight that has instructed you, given you some encouragement, and even possibly challenged you to make you look at the way you do some things. Amen. If God's word challenges you, if you like everything I say, then, then I'm not doing my job. But praise the Lord, if it challenges you and makes you re-examine, okay, where am I at? What am I doing? And maybe for some people, it wasn't a challenge. It wasn't a rebuke. It was just a confirmation of where you are at in your life. But understand this, beloved. God's got his hands on you. And you're, you're, you're being processed. And your process is about to bring fulfillment. Amen. There's about ten of you, praise the Lord. And I know God has declared new over your life. You're going to experience new. Even, Even in the midst of this pandemic, you're going to experience new. Somebody's going to pay off a car. During this period of social distancing, when the economy is not where it needs to be, you want to see the favor of God hit your life because you have allowed God to process you for greatness. And this process is bringing fulfillment in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for those that sat with me for a moment to receive this word.
word in this live. We pray tonight that your word would not return void, but it would accomplish that which you have called it in our life. Help us tonight to go through the process so that we can experience the fulfillment. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Amen. Listen, if this message, praise the Lord. Dollar sign the way church sixty six hundred. Dollar sign the way church You know, don't just get this word and say it was a blessing and it, and, it, and it really spoke to you and then you're not so into it, praise God. Because sowing into it is a declaration that I believe what this word says. So consider, Amen, uh, sharing a gift, Amen, with the way church. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you is my prayer in Jesus.